Um, so today is just a short video. It's going to be a bit of a behind the scenes of uh, Windows 3D Builder and then Decura before I take it across to my printer. So I might I won't cover the printer so much today, but that's um, we'll do that in the next one, and we'll get straight into it. Right, so here we are in uh, Windows 3D Builder, which comes free with Windows 10. So this is my main one I use for cutting up my model. So this is my file I've been using so far. So you'll see all the pieces here that I've done up to this point, um, except for the skull. I hide that in a separate file because it takes it is obviously quite a high poly model, so it takes a little bit to open and close with more stuff in here. Um, that leg I haven't cut because I ended up they were so similar like they had some subtle changes that I'd deliberately done for the online model but I just um, decided to instead of cutting that one up I just reprinted this one that I had used for the right leg and just basically put it in I mirrored it all the pieces were mirrored and they all came off perfect um, and fit fit the other side just perfectly so that was just a bit of a time saver not having to go through and cut it all up again um, there's all the backbone pieces there, so I'm, I'm actually working on the ribs. I've just started printing the ribs, so we'll cut one up so you can see that sort of how it how it works. Um, so that's a rib there. So I kind of this is just my method of doing it, so that I don't get lost as to where I am. I just cut up one piece prior to it going on the printer, so that I don't. Um, yeah, as you can see on a project this size, it'll be very easy to lose track of where you're up to. Like in the past, I've had a book and I've written them down, like numbered them and, and the rest of it. But this method here, where I only cut it up just before going on the printer, is the easiest way I've found for myself to do it. So, and then I basically I just click on this side, center on it. Um, you double click to center on a piece. So I'm just trying to figure out. I obviously want to. Um, Got a, it's obviously got to fit my printer, so if you click on the size button and down the bottom here, it gives you the dimensions here and the different axes. Like that that way is one eleven hundred and fifty millimeters uh, tall, so that's you know a bit over a meter, or yeah, one point one meters high. Um, so or one hundred and fifteen centimeters. So it's no way that's going to fit on my printer. So that's my printer's got a printing area of 470 mil high. So I usually try and use the maximum of the build height if I can. So if I cut this into three, um, it'll probably fit. And then I try and cut it in such a way that I don't use uh, any uh, s supports if I can help it too. So and then we to split it in here. We just go to the split feature. Sometimes it'll be on just keep one keep the bottom or keep both you always, I always click it to keep both and then it's just you can just drag this up and down you can um, rotate it so that you can get nice square uh, or perpendicular to the to the print bed so that's there um, I'm just gonna bring that around a little bit probably about there should do and then I'll split that I just want to split this piece again because it's not the ideal shape there to print. Because I, I mean, I could put supports and print it as it is there. But what I've been doing so far is well, I've done about I think I've cut up two ribs now. There's I'm on the one on the printer now. Um, I will do what I did on the other one. I'll put that about there. that up a little bit and split so that those two oh, I don't want to undo that one just got to be careful when you're in the size mode because if I click there now it gives me the dimensions it's 210 by 323 by 324 all as I'm looking is to see it as long as it's under 450 and the X and Y and the Z is less than 470 um, then I'm sweet Yep, that one's good. These are going to be a lot smaller prints, so I'm obviously not going to be using the full potential of the bed now on some of these pieces. Once I get back to the shoulder and the uh, underneath side where there's bigger pieces, it'll be back and the same as back on the tail. Um, typically, if I was building these for strength, I'd probably prefer to slice them 
and have the print la uh, layers running lengthways rather than round and round because it's definitely a little bit weaker but being ribs they're super light they're not structural at all and with the fact that I'm going to coat them with resin after that's not not an issue with this build so I'm just doing it as 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 it is so it will split split this one I'll try and get these as square or as parallel as I can to the as the up so they'll be as upright as possible mainly because that you can use the settle feature in here I'll show that next so if I I'll go to this one and I rotate this over where are we there and then if you go to object mode there's a feature called settle uh, it's not going to do it it'll do it in um, Cura so we'll just do it there so I'll just call that one it I'll settle this one uh, they're not going to work so I'll just save this as four separate files because what you can do is you can get them to settle and stay upright they are then perfectly flat to the uh, print bed and then you can then move them in and get them nice and close and then you can export it as one STL for that one print file then so that and you won't have to have them as separate pieces because you can't use the obviously if they were all exported as one piece and they weren't quite parallel with the ground or the print bed um, in Cura it's very hard to get them to well you can't because it's it's one model as an STL so you, you can't get it to uh, lay flat it's like some of them will be off off the print bed this one will lay flat I'll show you this one will should lay flat anyway if I settle this one yep it's, so that's basically like that's perfectly flat to the print bed so now what I normally do is I'll select all wait for it to select them all again everyone else probably has their own different processes then I'll deselect that one which I'm going to make as rib number three so I'll delete and then I just go file save as and where's ribs ribs and then I'll change the format to STL and I'll just renumber it here rib 3 this is probably a little bit hard to read because I'm running a 4k monitor and I'm not sure how that'll come across on the recording um, then I go back here control Z and then I'll do this one next so delete everything and basically do that process until I've exported um, the the what is it the uh, three four pieces that I'm doing here so I'll just quickly go through and name these control Z and then we'll swap straight across to Cura once I've done this so I'll just do this one I'll I was going to stop it and edit it here, but I think I'll just do it real time so you can see how long it actually takes or how quick it is to get a print set up. Um, delete. I'll save as. And this will be rib 3B. Save. Control Z. save as and we'll make this C C save control Z and then what I do after I've done each um, export of each separate piece then I'll resave the entire file with that cut up piece as a 3MF so I'll get that started now so I'll save this as my 3MF file which then keeps all the pieces in their separate separate uh, places so now we've done that so we'll jump straight to Cura um, now we're in Cura we go across here and we'll open and I'll go to rib 3 so that's that first piece that's set perfectly sitting level on the bed and I'm happy with that just to print as it is that'll print fine and then I'll go I'll open rib A uh, B and see now this is this is where I'll just set uh, this is where if you get them nice and balanced they will actually stand up in uh, the 3d builder and then you won't have to position them in here but otherwise you just use the rotate tool and then click the select face pan around and then you select the face and it will um, position it perfectly flat to the bed 
after that, so now we'll go select this one, rotate face mode, uh, which one's that going to do, which is the biggest end, probably this end, so we'll click on there, no, I've clicked on the wrong face there, that's it, yep, now we'll go to this one, probably this end, yep, the back here, now we just move them in, and then I'll just come across here with this one, try and keep them as sort of close together, make the printer do a bit less travelling. Uh, this one can go to there. And, and if I need supports, which I'm looking at this, I don't really on these. I may, uh, it'd probably be alright, but I might put one under there anyway. So what you do, there's a plugin you can get for Cura. This is, I'm running Cura 5, I think, here. Um, there's a, once you've got this plugin, I think you can add custom support. So once you click on a piece, say if you, underneath it, you can um, you can change the size of them, um, diameter of them, or you can choose what style. I just go for a round one with the minimum thickness as possible, so that it, it's um, not wasting too much material. But say if I was going to do that, I might actually leave that one there. Um, the rest of them should be fine. I've had no issues. This uh, CRT Max that I'm using now is just it's got such good bead adhesion, these uh, small narrow prints like this, I have no issues with them adhering to the bead, even like at that sort of height. So um, that's good to go, so then we click slice. I've uh, All my settings I've got set, so I don't actually change them as much anymore, so because I'm kind of just keeping the, these ones will be all fairly hollow, so I think I'm running it. Uh, where is it? No supports. Um, temperature of 220 degrees for PLA plus or eSun PLA plus um, filament. Um, I'm this these ones I'm going to use the light. I've been set up. I've set them up for the lightning infill pattern, which is uh, we can we're saving it now. I'll just quickly save this. Save this as rib three, and we'll just preview it so you can see what the lightning infill looks like. So we'll just drag this down. So lightning infill is pretty much almost hollow but what it does is it does build out infill to support like you just see it starting to show there uh, to support the um, the walls or um, roof in certain parts so on the floor here is these are pretty straightforward bits it's probably not the best one to show it on because they're going to be basically hollow which is good because I don't want to tick I want to keep down the weight as much as possible hanging off the uh, backbone structure so and there's no nothing hanging off these as such so and you'll notice that I've put two holes through here which I've done through all the ribs in blender which I can then have a either a piece of uh, aluminium tubing or PVC just so that all the ribs are located and positioned exactly as they are on my model in the digital format so that it um, makes it a lot easier then I can hang that with another framework over the main one but yeah, it's as simple as that, and then from there it goes onto the printer, and um, we'll probably get to the printer in the next video. I hope that was uh, informative, and uh, catch you on the next one.